Are you wondering when will your BPD and MPD come back? Why they are coming back and what you should do if they come back? Then this is the video for you. First of all, let me premise that actually, first of all, if you can drop a like, that really helps the video. But let me start with a video by premising that not all BPDs and MPDs will come back. As you all know, it depends on many, many factors. For instance, how long your relationship was, why did it end? And depending on the reasons behind this or the circumstances, it will increase or diminish the chances of them coming back. So for instance, if it ended because you made a horrible mistake like cheating, for example, then it is possible that they won't be able to get over that and that they won't come back. But if it ended for other reasons and you were always there trying to make it work, then it's not only possible, but it's actually quite likely that they will uh, come back at some point. But of course, it also depends on how long the relationship was. If you dated for two months, you fell head over heels for this person, even if you know that they had BPD and MPD, well, it's possible that they won't come back because, you know, they simply don't know you and uh, they... The BPD and the MPD might be a strong reason for the relationship ending after a couple of months, but it's also possible that you simply were not a match. So I think the longer the relationship was, or you know, the more serious it was, the stronger are the chances that they will uh, come back. So why do they come back? Well, one of the first reasons, probably the first reason, is that eventually uh, they realize that you were a good person for them. And uh, this might not happen immediately. Uh, you know, if a relationship ends, there's a lot of emotions usually in the start. But once they calm down or once you calm down as well, and emotions are less strong and you have time to think rationally about the relationship, to evaluate the relationship, then it's possible that they will realize that actually you were a good person for them. You know, that you were a caring, empathetic, understanding individual, partner. And these are all values and qualities that are extremely difficult to find, you know. So over time, they will realize what you brought to the relationship. And that, in fact, one of the, the second reason is why they come back is that they cannot find uh, outside what you, what you want, what you were. Uh, so after the relationship ends, it's possible that they will date other people. They will go out with other people. They will meet other people. And once they do that, they realize that, oh, my God, actually, you were much better than these people. You know, people uh, can be selfish. They can be egocentric. There's a lot of personality disorders, issues, you know, and they might realize that, you know, all in all, you were actually a, a very nice, good person for them. And they will reach a conclusion that you were the better option. Uh, and uh, actually, for a BPD and an MPD, when they see that the dating market is not great that might actually trigger their abandonment issues you know they might start to become uh, concerned that they will be alone so if they start if the abandonment issues start to be triggered as well what might happen is that they actually come back with a bang you know they will come back to you with big confessions of love of passion etc so so be careful i also think it's important for you to evaluate whether you are comfortable or not uh, getting back with someone who had to go out in the dating market to eventually reach the conclusion that you were the best option out there, you know. And I think if I look at myself in my younger years, maybe that would have been okay, but that's certainly not okay now that you're, I am more mature, you know, and I don't think that someone needs to break up, uh, end up in the dating market to realize uh, my own self worth. And that's something that I would not compromise for no matter how much I like someone or don't you know so that's something you need to evaluate would you be able to get back into a relationship with someone that you know how to date other people to realize that you were the best person out there up to you the third reason is that they do the inner work uh, they do the inner work and they realize the mistakes that they made um and uh, but this actually in reality never never really happens or never happens successfully it's possible that they go to a therapist it's possible even that they will start dbt dialectical behavioral therapy which is the let's say designated therapy for these cases 
Uh, and there might also be some moments where they have this helicopter view, where they realize the patterns of their life, where they realize that their personality disorder is the leading cause for all the unsuccessful relationships that they've had and the traumas that they've had. But the problem is that even if they have these helicopter view moments, helicopter view is kind of like when you distance yourself and you look at your own self or at your own life from a helicopter perspective, you know, from a distant perspective. That's why it's called helicopter view. But these moments, uh, as I said, are very fleeting. You know, they last very little and eventually uh, they will go back to who they were. Um, so. And the, the problem here is that often they will come back and they will tell you that they have changed, making you believe that there is hope. But don't don't fall for it. And I think I have other videos that talk about, you know, whether a BPD or an MPD can actually heal. So how do they come back? Well, the first thing to realize here is that BPDs and MPDs are actually pretty smart and they can be very manipulative. So what they will do is that they will tailor their return to you depending on what works best. You know, So if they know that, that you are angry, coming back to you with big confessions of love when you are angry is not going to work because you will push them away. So they might do it in a subtle or slow way. They might take their time. They might like an image here and there. Uh, they might like an image on your social media. They might write you a casual message for Christmas or your birthday. Basically, they're testing the waters. And that's so manipulative if you think of it, you know, this, uh, this strategy of slowly planting the seed. And eventually what will happen is that you will realize that you let them too close, that you forgot your anger, you know, and uh, and you might let them back in, you know, and they've achieved their accomplishment. But the opposite might work too as well. You know, if you're not angry, you know, big confessions of love might work for you. They might make you think, oh my God, they've changed. They must have changed if they're telling me all these amazing things that they've uh, changed, that they will never go back to who they were. They're demonstrating their love for me by buying me uh, whatever it is, a holiday, uh, gifts. They're coming under my apartment, even if I'm screaming at them. And that might work for certain people. So, so they will be able to tailor their approach depending on what works best. The second thing that they will use typically is memories. So they will send you, for instance, pictures of the best moments you ever had in that relationship that you would cherish. You know, those moments are the reason that you stayed in a toxic relationship for so long. And they know that very well. So they will send you pictures, memories, gifts, whatever it is to remind you of those idealistic, uh, idyllic moments of the relationship, you know, where you were uh, in cloud nine, happy as happy as you could be. And, and and they will use that to manipulate you because you will start feeling melancholic. You'll start to forget the anger and you will start building hope that you could eventually go back to that one day. So memories are a tool that they use quite a lot uh, through images, text, whatever it might be, even through other people as well. You know. And then the third thing, which I've already spoken about before, is about the promises of change. After they've re-established contact with you and you're not pushing them away, ignoring them, blocking them or whatever else, they will start telling you that they have changed, that they've looked at the relationship and realized uh, what has happened and realized the mistakes that they have done. And they will also possibly apologize and say that they will never do the same things again. So to wrap up, uh, why are you watching this video? You're probably watching this video because at some level you still have hopes that they will come back, even if you know that they are not really the right person for you. And I know that whatever I say, it will not be enough to make you understand that you should not have that hope. They should not want them to come back because I was in those shoes myself, you know, and I was hoping that they came back, even if I was not uh, uh, happy or whatever else, you know. And I knew that they were not the right person, you know, and it was not until I got back with them that I realized that this is actually a hopeless person that will never change. And eventually the second time we properly broke up was when I was able to move on because I was able to realize, you know what, I gave it another chance. And now I realize that this person is never going to change. Um, so that's why I don't try to tell people, you know, don't uh, get back together, you know, actually get back together, see for yourself. And then once you get back together and you see that nothing has changed, then you will be finally able to tell yourself, OK, you know what? This person is not going to change. But my only condition to this is if you get back together once, 
and things are still, uh, uh, let's say, toxic, you know, and you get out, that's it. That's when you draw the line. And if you get back together more than that time, well, then you are the person that probably should go to therapy as well.